Ah, uh, you won't find many backdrops better than that here in Utah. It's Real Monarchs and the Town FC from Zions Bank Stadium in Harriman, Utah. Match week five of MLS Next Pro. Both teams coming in 1-1-1. One, one, and one. But a shootout loss for the town last week in heartbreaking fashion against North Texas has them at four points, while Real Monarchs sits at five. This Western Conference battle should be a good one. The Town FC will get to it throughout the match. A string of bad luck on the road against North Texas. They were just a few seconds away from three points. They were playing up a man before conceding the tying goal at the death in added time and then falling in a shootout. Let's take a look at our Western Conference standings in MLS Next Pro. Through match week five, there you see Real Monarchs right below the cut line. And the Town FC sitting there with four points. A win could put them above Whitecaps FC2 and tie them up with LAFC2 in fifth place. Real Monarchs can do the same here tonight. Let's take a look at our lineups for tonight. For Coach Lowry and Real Monarchs, here's how they line up in front of Gavin Beavers. Six MLS loanees in the starting 11 for Real Monarchs here tonight. Dylan Iskandarian and Kaliskan in the midfield. Silva, Farnsworth, Storley, Alba in front of Beavers, while Bell, Paul, and Gozo, all three up top for Real Monarchs on loan from MLS. For Dan DeGeer and the Town FC, it's Lynch, Blancas, Edwards up top. Mendoza, the captain, Medina in the middle. LaRue as well. Ricketts, Walls, Cano, Verhoeven in front of Mikolai Biganski, who did all he could in the penalty shootout last week. Couldn't earn the extra point for the Town. Real Monarchs coming off a 2-1 win over Minnesota United last week. Xavier Gozo had a brace in his first appearance of the season. We are about to get underway from Zions Bank Stadium. A referee, Tim Wagner, Cameron Seiler, Karsten Gilwald, our assistant referees, and the fourth official is Jordan Downs. Lionel Giro and Christian Kelly still out for Real Monarchs. Damian Barker, John, Burton Jackson both came in questionable. Neither in the starting 11 for Real Monarchs. Real Monarchs took four points between both of last year's matchups. Won the first one, one nil. Drew in the second. Both sides today trying to get into a winning record for the first time in this young season. Elijah Paul had control and then lost it on that far side. Josh Appel with you. Thanks so much for spending part of your Sunday with us. Closing out match week five. In MLS Next Pro. Turned over and then cleared away right away by Bo LaRue. And very much a missed opportunity for the town against North Texas last week on the road. They got a huge break near the end of the first half. North Texas. Went down a man after a red card. And the town could just never build on the one nothing lead that they had. And I wouldn't even say they sat back, but they just couldn't cash in and get any insurance. And that just left the door cracked open just a little bit for North Texas to fire one into the box from the goalkeeper, take a deflection, put it past Biganski, and send the game to a shootout. Here's Elijah Paul. 
And his pass couldn't find its way through to Xavier Gozo, who had the brace in the last match for Real Monarchs. On the left side, Cruz Medina. Played into the box, takes a deflection. Riley Lynch was on it, and it's a corner early for the Town FC. Lalo Blancas leads the team in assists. Take what should be an in-swinger from that far corner. This is the first of, excuse me, the final of four in a row on the road for the town. They will finally play a home match next Saturday against Austin FC at PayPal Park. So, you know, you, you look at what happened last week against North Texas, and you see this stretch to open the year for the town, and it's just got to be frustrating when you have a chance to get three points on the road and come away with only one. Towards the back post, dangerous spot, and a whistle, and nothing doing. Beaver sends it all the way down. Again, six MLS loanees in the starting 11 today, including Gavin Beavers for Real Monarchs. Fired into the area, headed away momentarily by the town. And now it's cleared away. Licked back, and it's Kaliskan. One touch from Silva. Now Bell. Bell has it taken away by Cano, but a corner coming. Comes the corner over everybody's head. Chased down on the far side and cleared away. Farnsworth had a little bit of pressure in his face from Aaron Edwards, and it caused Real Monarchs to reset. Now they're kind of backed up a bit, and the pressure forces a turnover momentarily. Now a long ball down the right side, trying to spring an attack. Paul couldn't get to it, and it's cleared over the touchline by Verhoeven. And it'll be a throw-in for Real Monarchs. Whistle and a foul. Yeah. 
Free kick from, I'll call it about 30 on an angle. The service, no chance for anybody. Closest one who can make a play on it was Keller Storley, captain. Collision, and this might draw a card. That's Edwin Mendoza who's down, clutching his lower back. And Tim Wagner has the yellow in his hand, and he has given the yellow to Noel Kaliskan. Oof, nasty collision. Real Monarchs, number 92, Noel Kaliskin. And Mendoza remains down. Mendoza, a native of San Jose, has come up through the Quakes Academy. Just a few weeks away from his 18th birthday. And he's still being tended to. Mendoza still holding that lower back, and he's being slowly escorted off the pitch. Mendoza still very gingerly making his way towards the sideline. We'll see if he's able to continue, but from the looks of that, might be a pipe dream for him at the moment, unfortunately. It does look like Dan DeGeer is getting ready to make a substitution for Edwin Mendoza. And that is the case indeed. Alexander Chow is going to come on and replace him. Substitution for the Town FC, leaving the match, number 38, Edwin Mendoza. Entering the match, number 75, Alexander Chow. So back ready for play, Mendoza exits, Chow enters. And Elijah Paul almost forced a bad giveaway and a chance. Be 
Gansky. Sends towards the near side. Settled down by Verhoeven. Too strong on the touch and given away. Matthew Bell to the right side. And a miss hit by Xavier Gozo, who had a brace last week. That looked like something dangerous developing for Matthew Bell and Elijah Paul as we take one more look. Maybe we want to see Bell put that on frame himself. We can never blame a player for being unselfish. Maybe a little too unselfish there. Edwards looks up to the sky, knows he almost forced one. Bell goes down, and the foul is given. Never got all the way through. Streaking across, that's Derek Silva, who plays it now to the far side. Defended well and taken away. It's Riley Lynch. Pass cut off by Keller Storley, the captain. Now Silva for Storley. Gansky, the keeper. Cano. Now Verhoeven. And it's deflected out by Bell. Into the 15th minute. Farnsworth, Kaliskan. Space on the left for Silva. Now Bell, cut off well by Cano, and Cano takes away, keeps it in, and avoids conceding the corner. Edwards shoved from behind, but he got last touch on it, and it's a throw in. This portion of tonight's match is presented by Intermountain Health. The power of we. Medina for the town. On the left side, it's Lynch. Caught off by Omar Alba. Alive by LaRue. Chow gets it back. Through ball on the right side. It's Verhoeven, but he can't catch up to it, and it's a goal kick.
Bell leaves it on the far right side. Monarchs trying to get the game's first goal. And that pass a little bit too tall for Hiskandarian. Nasty collision, and that's a foul going against Lynch. And now player is down for Monarchs. That's Omar Alba holding that left arm, and looks like he's okay, though, as he's able to get back up. given just outside the 18 so an advantageous spot for a free kick That's about as close as you can get fouled without receiving a penalty for it. It's less than a yard out, if that. Dangerous spot for the home side. Oh, what a strike. It's sitting there in the box. The second attempt is blocked, and then Ricketts went for a bicycle kick attempt. It's thrown into the area again and cleared away by Monarchs. Oh, goodness. They saw the danger. They dealt with it. Now let's take another look. That went off the bar. I don't think Beavers even got a piece of it. And then the town just couldn't get it on frame after that. Far and away the best chance for either side. And now a long throw in by Edwards. Pinballs around, Lynch, and the town FC for the second consecutive game is on the board first on the road. Riley Lynch off the long throw in by Edwards to a couple of pinballs, and Lynch gets the town on the board first. Second of the year for Riley Lynch from a difficult angle as well. And you can see how fired up Aaron Edwards is. Same story as last week for the town. Up a goal. Now can they hang on? Giveaway. Could this be another chance? Chow! And then aggressive off the line, Gavin Beavers. And now Monarchs want to counter quickly. Darren Iskandarian. His pass across was deflected. Remains in Monarchs' possession. Derek Silva.
Keller Scorley. Kaliskan. This portion of tonight's match is presented by America First, the official credit union of Real Salt Lake. America First has game-changing solutions for every financial need, so join the winning team today at AmericaFirst.com. Down on the goal by Lynch. And we have a whistle. And the flag was up for offside. Battle forward in the corner. Gozo was the last to touch it, so a throw in. Silva. Silva again. The cross. Comes in front. Diskandarian. And it's blocked away. Sixth minute, one nothing to the town on the goal by Riley Lynch. And now, is this the moment where Monarchs can equalize? No.
Chow, who came on for Mendoza as an early sub. Edwards tried to leave it out there for Verhoeven, but unable to get to it. LaRue, Verhoeven. A bit too fast there. Maybe not under control. Medina was looking for Edwards, but Edwards and Mendoza were, or excuse me, Medina weren't on the same page. Oh, bad giveaway. Turn, shot, high from Lalo Blancas. Town resets here. A lot of speed for Iskandarian, who had a chance moments ago. And this looks to be a corner for Real Monarchs. Or just a throw in. Yep, just a throw in. Deflected around, LaRue clears. Sent in, but Beganski controls. Medina. Now LaRue. Medina. Verhoeven trying to chase it down on the corner. It's a battle of 33s over there. This portion of the match is brought to you by Zions Bank, official bank of Real Monarchs. Still 1-0 on the goal about 10 minutes ago by Riley Lynch. Experience Friday Night Lights MLS Next Pro style again next Friday night when City 2 and Real Monarchs meet at City Park in St. Louis. Coverage begins at 8 p.m. only on MLS Season Pass.
Bell with some space. Bell with a strong touch. He lost it, and it's turned over. It's been a good half for the town defensively as well. I mean, Real Monarchs has threatened once, maybe twice, but nothing all that dangerous. The town, though, is, to their credit, converted one of their, if not only chances, it came in a flurry, remember, off a, a free kick from just outside the 18, resulted in a throw in and then off the throw in Aaron Edwards put in a good spot got a good bounce and Lynch from a bad angle was able to net it for his second of the season and again give the town a chance to play with the lead on the road out of the reach on that far side and a throw in for Real Monarchs Trying to build something. Iskandarian. For Bell. Silva. Nice spin in tight quarters by Farnsworth. Finds Bell. Bell still with it. Shielded off well by Bo LaRue, and it's taken away by the town. Frustrating trip down, and now. Lalo Blancas on the wing for Edwards. Dana somehow got that on target. Here comes Monarchs trying to get the equalizer here in the first half, and they'll have a chance on a corner. Swinger. It's a good one. And Beganski able to handle it. The town face defending champs next Saturday, Austin FC, April 20th. Coverage begins 10 p.m. Eastern right here on MLS Season Pass. for it. 
One, though, by the town. Verhoeven. Is this onside? No, it is not. Silva. Iskandarian with speed. LaRue watches him. Iskandarian. Back for him. He goes down and they let that go. Fraction. Forty first minute, still sitting on the one goal by Riley Lynch in the twenty second. Could this be a chance? Bell. Now Silva. Watch closely, and he has to reset. lands over the goal line. been a busy man in the first half. Fired high by Gozo.
24th minute. Corner here for the town near the end of the first half. Front post punched out. Rick gets a chance and another one. And a foul the other way. Four minutes of added time here in the first half. Riley Lynch still the only goal in the first half. On the right side. Gozo goes down. He's had a bit of a tough go in this first 45. Edwards couldn't get there. Good tackle in front of him by Farnsworth. Iskandarian. Towns on a very nice job here on the road in the first half, much like they did against North Texas last week. Again, can they finish? This is the final of four to open on the road this season for the town. They play at PayPal Park next week. Waiting the final whistle, and there it is. Or is that a foul? That's a foul, not the final whistle of the first half.
Cano. Play towards Beavers, who gives it back to Storley. Kaliskan trades with Bell, and flicked forward to Iskandarian. The last touch there by the town. This could be the final attempt of the first half. A free kick coming for the town. Lynch, the goal scorer, stands over it with Lalo Blancas. And it's Blancas who will take it. Into the area it comes. Deflects to the outside. Edwards. And I think the town wanted a handball. Instead, they get the final whistle in half number one. So Riley Lynch in the 22nd minute, the only tally we have. And after 45 and a few extra, it's 1-0 at the break to the town. Halftime is coming up after we check in with the Generation Adidas Cup. One nil at the break to the town from Zions Bank Stadium in Harriman, Utah. Real Monarchs, the home side trails at the half. Well, we crowned we crowned a champion in the U15 division of the Generation Adidas Cup. James Hadnot, our good friend, tells us more. Today we crowned a champion on the campus of IMG Academy at the 2024 Generation Adidas Cup U15s. Valencia, Toulouse, and Mark makes it happen as he's done all tournament. But it's a spacing before he gets on the ball. It's Santi who comes central, and it's Mark that breaks the line with his run. The way he just opens up his hips, so clean, so classy. 1-0 Valencia. And then insurance always necessary in a final. Stepping up is Amadou. What a strike. As Jay requires so much attention, he plays it right into the path of his number nine. There's information on it. He needs to hit it first time. Just ropes this thing in the top quarter. That's two goals for Valencia. And more importantly, they are your U15 GA Cup champions. Valencia victorious. The final 2-0 over to lose. The U-17 championship came down to a shootout. David Goss, Ricky Lopez, Espin have the details. You couldn't ask for a better final here at the 2024 Generation Adidas Cup. The clear two best teams, a clash of titans, a clash of styles as the Philadelphia Union against the LA Galaxy. Diego Rocio gets the scoring started once again for the third straight game. Fantastic technique from Rocio to let this thing come across, but it's a reaction from the Galaxy. As Miller goes byline, the space is the cutback. Clever run from Moreno. 
get it on target. You give yourself a chance for Manny. It's an uh-oh moment for Atkinson, but it's 1-1 at this point in time. Dylan Vanny equalizes just two minutes later. Adam Dunbar gets on the end of this one. Cannot finish. Mati Albert follows it up, and Dunbar with the go-ahead goal. There to clean it up. But Atkinson, you want to carry it wide and away from pressure. 2-1 LA Galaxy, but you knew the Union will never go down without a fight. First it's Sidey, then it's Johnson, and just watching the center of your screen. It's Sullivan. Johnson has the composure, the patience to let this play develop, and the ongoing run to advance yourself as a midfielder is so important for Sal Sullivan. A little dance from Johnson. Thank you very much. 2-2, David Goss. Kevin Sullivan equalizes, but regulation was not enough to get between these two teams, and we went to a shootout. Atkinson with the massive save to keep his team alive. Neil Pierre scores it in the sixth round. Sakiris puts it over, and back-to-back -back GA Cup championships for the Philadelphia Union. Congratulations to all of our winners at the Generation Adidas Cup. Here in Utah, it's 1-0 at the half to the town over Real Monarchs. You know, we talk a lot about the path for the players through the MLS system, but the path for coaches is equally important. Let's meet Erin Ridley and her journey into MLS coaching in San Jose. Uh, my name is Aaron Lycan Ridley, and I'm the head coach of the U15 boys here at the San Jose Earthquakes. I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee originally. Uh, I was a multi sport athlete. I played uh, soccer, of course. I played softball, basketball, tennis, swimming, cross country track. Um, so a lot of different sports, but fell in love with soccer, and that was the one for me. Like so many kids, Aaron's introduction to the game came through family. I started playing soccer at the age of 11. And my brother and I joke because my mom signed him up first and he's younger than me and of course I couldn't let my younger brother do anything competitively that he was doing that I wasn't doing. In 1994, the United States hosted the Men's World Cup, which boosted the popularity of soccer around the country. It wasn't long after that that we had the 1994 World Cup here in the United States and I was completely captivated. I was 11 years old for the 94 World Cup and um, definitely Fell in love with the U.S. team at that point and followed the game ever since. Erin played as a goalkeeper, falling in love with the position early. She attended the University of Virginia, where she was part of the number one recruiting class in the country. Unfortunately, during her time in Charlottesville, Erin suffered numerous injuries, which steered her in the direction of becoming a coach. I was really lucky that I went right into college coaching after I was done with with playing and, and I fell in love with it for its own sake. Coaching would lead Erin back to her hometown, where she would coach the women's team of one of MLS Next Pro's newest clubs, Chattanooga FC. So I was the head coach of the Chattanooga FC women, which is in the WPSL. And that was an incredible experience for me. One, because that's home for me, Chattanooga's home. So it kind of felt full circle coming back. My first impression of her was was that she, um, first of all, knew the game very well at a super high level. Um, even back then, that, that, was, that was super clear. My husband and I moved back to my hometown to help me recover, and I was really lucky to get into that community and become the head coach there. And the first year was really challenging. It was all local players. I had been uh, coming back from this, this brain injury and only had gotten back on the field in time to get open tryouts. And they were the most amazing, bought-in, hardworking women. And I had players from 16 to 32. I had young mothers on the team. I had high school players on the team. I think we won one game that year and that set the foundation for the next year. And the following year we had not only the sport of community, the Chattahooligans there are incredible, um, but we had, I was able to recruit nationally and we brought in top players and we were able to make an incredible run and put together. But it started with that first year and this like spark and love of the game. And one of my favorite parts about that is how many of those women have continued to play. They extended their careers or even that they're now coaching. And I think that's a huge mark of success from, from that time. She expects a, a lot out of her players. She expects a, a super high level of, of commitment and work rate and all those great you know, qualities that you'd expect in a strong player, but um, but at the end of the day, like there's there's compassion there to where the players knew they always knew that she cared about their best interests. Um, so even when she pushed them, um, it, it was from the right place, and everybody always knew that. 
Aaron also coached at Baylor School, a boarding school in Chattanooga. While on staff at Baylor School, Aaron coached Darrell's oldest daughter, Zoe. As a parent, what you know, whether you're, your kids in athletics or not, you want them to be around teachers and coaches who, who care for them as human beings first. Um, I don't think anybody puts their kid in sports for any other reason than to have them mentored and, and nurtured. And, and I, I saw that as a parent. Um, it, you know, Aaron is the kind of coach that, that you want your, your kid to play for. Um, and then on the professional side, she's the kind of coach you want involved in your organization because of everything that she stands for. Her level of excellence that she expects of you know not only her players but of herself. She's constantly been growing. You've seen that in, her, in the way her career has evolved. Erin's time at Chattanooga FC is remembered fondly for her impact on and off the pitch. A coach of her pedigree will always draw the attention of U.S. soccer. Back at Zions Bank Stadium, halftime between Real Monarchs and the town. Currently, the town have the lead 1-0 on a first half goal in the 22nd minute by Riley Lynch, his second of the season. Coming up next, we'll check in with the rest of the MLS Next Pro schedule. We'll also have highlights and stats. Right MLS store, I need something fresh and clean. Let's see what you got. I need that in my size. It's not like this. Cream on cream? The fit is cold. I'm ice cream. <laughs> and you like that? Welcome back to Zions Bank Stadium, a beautiful backdrop for MLS Next Pro Match Week 5. As we take a look at our upcoming schedule and our scores from around MLS Next Pro. FC Cincy, Chicago Fire, and New York Red Bulls getting the victories on Wednesday. Philadelphia Union taking the extra point on Thursday. How about Austin FC going down to St. Louis City 2 on Friday? Chattanooga FC, look at that thumping of Inter Miami 2. Huntsville and Crown Legacy went to a shootout. Crown Legacy picking up the extra point. And then tomorrow we wrap things up on match week five with Atlanta United. So we had one goal in the first half, but a few chances. And this one was probably one of the better ones for Real Monarchs. Matthew Bell sent it to the right side for Xavier Gozo, who had two in the last matchup. This was the sequence for the Town FC where they got things going. Off the free kick the first time, off the crossbar, a, a beautiful attempt. And then after this clearance, went over the touchline for a throw-in. 
This magnificent throw in by Edwards, pinballed around, ended up on the left foot of Riley Lynch, and he didn't waste his chance from a difficult angle. Gives a point to his teammate Edwards. And that's where we sit with the 1-0 score at the moment. Here was a chance for Iskandarian, but a great job stepping in front of it by Kaylee's Casey Walls. Another MLS loanee here with the town. And that's where we stand after 45 minutes. Our first half stats. Shots on target, two to one in favor of the town. A fairly clean first half, just one card to speak of. And that is how the first half shaped up here from Zions Bank Stadium. What will half number two have in store? We've talked about it all night. But last week, the town was up 1-0 for the majority. That is as long as you could be up in a match until about the last few, really the last chance for North Texas, down a man. They were able desperately to get one in the back of the net, tie the game, and then the town went from walking away with three points to walking away with one in a shootout loss. We will have the start of the second half in just a moment. Stick with us. All right, so we're ready with half number two from Utah. 22nd minute goal by Riley Lynch, the only tally to this point. Here we go with the final 45. See what kind of push Real Monarchs comes out with here in this second half. Lynch tried to speed around the corner, but did not win the throw.
Chow speeds through. He goes down. They let that go. No foul. Iskandarian can't get to it. He's cut off. Ricketts took a shove. And a throw in for Real Monarchs. Farnsworth retreats. Now it's Bell. Skandarian on the right wing. Gozo. Alba turns it back. in, headed away. And a throw in going the other way. Gozo disagrees. Throw in one. Another throw in here for the town. Medina, the captain. Remember, the town also lost one of their starters. In about the 11th minute, Edwin Mendoza went down and was replaced by Alexander Chow. They had to deal with an early substitution as well.
Race for it on the far side. The cross punched away. Edwards gets it back. Edwards and a corner. Comes the in swinging corner as the town looks to add on to their lead, and they'll get another shot at it here. They go short this time for Chow. Now up top, Medina. He couldn't find its way into the area. A couple of chances on a corner, and neither really threatened. A player cramping for Real Monarchs. This is Casey Walls. Iskandarian to the outside. Gozo, his cross blocked, gets another chance at it. To the top of the 18, Iskandarian. Shot was blocked, never got through. Walls again. Turnover, a chance, and it's sent wide. This portion of tonight's match is presented by Intermountain Health, the power of we. Medina finds Edwards. 
Edwards was the catalyst on the first and only goal. Medina shot blocked. Comes all the way back out to midfield. The eighth minute, only goal so far from Riley Lynch in the 22nd. Out on the left side, now into the area. Cleared away, again well defended in a dangerous spot by the town. Edwards goes down, that's a foul on Kaliskan. Substitutions now for Real Monarchs. Maybe they can spark something. Monarchs substitutions in the 60th minute of play, leaving the match. Number 23, Elijah Paul, and number 81, Griffin Dill. Entering the match for your Real Monarchs. Number 45, Ben Dresden. And number 70, Sebastian Hoffrey. So Sebastian Hoffrey, the Bolivian. Enters for Griffin Dolan, and then Elijah Paul comes off in favor of Benjamin Redzic. Good tackle, sprinting over by Alba.
Quick stoppage again, maybe for cramps. It's Ricketts, who was a bit slow to get up. Now the town makes its first substitution. Well, I guess it's second substitution, first in the second half. Ricardo Ibarra enters. Let's see what the ruling is here, and it will be a goal kick. This portion of tonight's match is presented by America First, the official credit union of Real Salt Lake. America First has game-changing solutions for every financial need. So join the winning team today at AmericaFirst.com. Into the box for Monarchs. Could this be the moment they were looking for? They want a foul in the box. They won't get it. Now it's Redzic. His attempt into the hands of Biganski. One more look, Redzic, best chance of the second half for Monarchs. Far side, Silva. Real Monarchs looking for that equalizer.
Ball's been on this half of the field for quite a while at this point. the town plays it here in the second half given the unfortunate events they went through last week they don't want to repeat the goal scorer Lynch Edwards who facilitated it look for Medina the captain and he has it and Blancas couldn't get to that one Caliscan. Lynch watched him now into the middle. Caliscan for Redzich and Offrey couldn't get to that. This portion of the match is brought to you by Zions Bank, official bank of Real Monarchs. A foul here on the town. Advantageous spot for a free kick. Towards the back post. Headed away, but this will be a corner. the town kept alive though for the moment by Iskandarian in the corner and it's a throw in Alba throws in fewer than 20 minutes left in this one plus added time Ozo, and that's not going to be a corner. It stays in. Good save there by Beganski. He hasn't been tested much, but when he has, he's come up with the saves. Chow, oh, 
and he misfired. Could have been much needed insurance for the town, but unable to get it on target. Chow came on early in the first half. A little bit of a misplay by Farnsworth. He stepped up and that opened the lane for Chow and he just couldn't put it on target. Experience Friday Night Lights MLS Next Pro Style next Friday night when City 2 and Real Monarchs meet at City Park Stadium in St. Louis. Coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern only on MLS Season Pass. Silva, or Gozo. And a corner here for Real Monarchs. the back post and it did take a deflection off of Keller Storley and now some pushing and shoving between the two sides in goal got very physical there couldn't quite tell what sparked it but they were deep into the back of the net tangled up Tim Wagner has to get this situation figured out See if we can tell what happened. Oh, wow. Edwards with a shove after the fact. Trying to help his teammate up. And, of course, that got everybody a little heated. Ibarra is the one who went down. Edwards with a shove to help him up. card goes to Edwards and you can understand why yellow card caution the town FC number 50 Aaron Edwards Hoffrey. And wins another corner. <laughs> 
Towards the back post. Nothing doing on the corner. Good spot for a free kick here. Redzic stands over it in the 78th minute. Goes short. Iskandarian pops it into the box. Nobody home. Substitution in the 79th minute of play, leaving the game number 41, Darren Iskenderson. Entering the game number 88, Jude Wellings. Correction number 38, Jude Wellings. So Iskandarian out. Wellings in. Cleared away by Real Monarchs. Down the stretch we go, 80th minute. The town up next, hopefully coming off of a win and for their sake. Face the defending champs on next Saturday, April 20th. Austin FC comes to the town. Coverage begins at 10 p.m. Eastern right here on MLS Season Pass. It will be the first home match of the season for the town. They've been on the road. This is the fourth straight road game to open the season. Yellow card caution. Real Monarchs, number 33, Tommy Silva. Silva picks up a yellow. Good tackle. Alba heads into the middle. Monarchs really have to push now. The goal by Lynch in the 22nd still standing on its head. As the only tally in the match. Redzic into the area. His shot deflected and cleared. Alba. Pass intercepted. Will the town counter or will they try and waste some time? Edwards, who facilitated the first and only goal. For Dan DeGeer's team. And he picks up a foul. Doesn't like the call. It's 
No, Kaliskan, who took a spill. Some speed and some space. Gozo had it dispossessed. He's had a tough night, but he gets it back and then lost it again. Now the town on the move. Great ball. Blancas. Looking for some insurance. And he lost it. Hoffrey. Redzic. Spins. And finds some space. And a teammate. To the middle. Gozo couldn't control it. And the throw in coming. In two, the 85th minute now. Can Real Monarchs find the equalizer? Bell. Flicked on, but right at Biganski. Edwards. Real Monarchs get it started. Gozo, watch closely. Verhoeven on him. And Edwards stepped in front of it. Still one nothing on the goal by Lynch in the first half. A seventh minute now. Time running out for Real Monarchs. Redzic, second half stub, good ball for Hoffrey. Hoffrey in a dangerous spot. Hoffrey, oh, kick save. Biganski comes up huge. 
Good build up too by the couple substitutions in the second half. It's over the head of Hoffrey and a goal kick. Substitutions for the town FC. Leaving the match, number 60, Eduardo Blancas Magadilla. Number 71, Riley Lynch. And number 50, Aaron Edwards. So they're going to make three Anthony subs match. up top. Number 63, Sean Filcher. Number 52, Julian Donnery, and number 78, Joel Garcia. Bilter, Donnery, and Garcia enter. So Lynch, the goal scorer, is out. And now the town for the second straight week in the final minutes, will be tasked with protecting a lead. They got score on at the death against North Texas last week and fell in a penalty shootout. Will their fortunes be different tonight? Couldn't connect with Redzich. Line. It's a throw in. Five minutes of added time. Five minutes until the town can pick up three points and rebound from a difficult loss last week. That a minimum of five minutes will be added to the second half. Wellings. Now Kalaskan. Red Zitch, he's been active off the bench in the second half. Flicked into the area. Oh! Hoffrey almost broke the hearts of the town again. Beautiful service in, but Hoffrey could not get it on target. Look at this ball from Bell. Back post, oh! That might have been the chance. And again, some extracurriculars and a yellow will be issued. It's going on Donnery. And that should buy Real Monarchs a few extra seconds more than the five as well. Storley for Redzich. Trying to find Alba, but couldn't. And a goal kick.
Turned over at midfield. Medina, the captain, trying to will his team on. And the flag comes up for offside. Donnery got too big of a head start. Bell. Oh, good step in front of that, and a good clear. Hoffrey looked to be all alone again, making another run. Bell's been great with those service. Back to back. Alba was a little bit too ambitious. Now gets it in. Bell. Redzich. Alba keeps it alive. Wellings spinning with it. Into the final minute of added time. Service in. For everyone's head and a goal kick. Biganski is just a few seconds away from his first clean sheet of the season. And it'll come on the road in a great rebound performance after giving up the tying goal in the final seconds of added time against North Texas. Just awaiting the final whistle of Tim Wagner. But he will likely allow one more rush up. Redzich. And that pass taken away. And there is the final whistle. And the three points to the Town FC they come on the road and defeat Real Monarchs 1-0. The goal in the 22nd minute by Riley Lynch, his second of the year, holds up for full time. And a, nice do a nicely done, nice performance, I should say, by Dan DeGear's squad after the heartbreaker against North Texas. Last week, they earned the three road points tonight, and they get to take them home for their first home match of the season next week against the defending champion, Austin FC. Tonight's man of the match, presented by Adidas, is our goal scorer, Riley Lynch. Great throw in here by Edwards. Came in the 22nd minute and pinballed around. And look at his angle. Leaping in the air with the left foot. That is class. And that stood to be the game winner. Riley Lynch, our Adidas man of the match. That'll do it for us here from Zions Bank Stadium in Harriman, Utah. A beautiful backdrop for MLS Next Pro Soccer. These two teams close out match week five with a tight one, but ultimately goes to the town. For our entire MLS Next Pro broadcast crew, I'm Josh Appel. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget, you can watch MLS Next Pro all season long at MLS Season Pass on Apple TV and MLSNextPro.com. Good night, and we will talk to you next time. This copyrighted broadcast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.